China's deadliest aviation disaster in decades could have been deliberate. A media report citing U.S. officials says the March crash of China Eastern Flight MU5735 could have been caused by, quote, someone in the cockpit. U.S. officials are helping analyze the flight's data recorder and cockpit voice recorder. The new assessment is based on information from this data. 132 people lost their lives after the Boeing 737-800 plunged vertically into a mountainside in southern China. This video, unverified but widely shared on social media, allegedly shows the final moments of flight MU5735 on March 21st. Soon afterward, crews began retrieving the debris, each piece a potential clue into what caused the deadly disaster. Now there are indications that the crash might have been deliberate. Data from the black box reportedly shows someone had sent the plane into a fatal nosedive. This, according to the Wall Street Journal, which cited people familiar with the preliminary assessment of U.S. officials. The U.S. took part in the investigation since the aircraft was manufactured there. The Boeing 737-800 from China Eastern Airline was on its way to the southern city of Guangzhou when it suddenly plunged into a mountainside. None of the 132 people on board survived. Both the U.S. and China say they've received no information from the other side on their respective investigation results so far. Although Beijing says it's doing its part to share data and will keep doing so. Aviation regulators will continue to maintain close communication with all parties involved in the investigation and release related information in a timely and accurate manner. China Eastern Airline had previously said the pilot's health and family conditions were good. When asked about a possible cockpit intrusion, it said such scenario was not plausible. Almost two months after the tragedy, families of the deceased say their wounds will not heal, not at least until they know why it happened. And joining me now for more from Melbourne is Crystal Jung. She's an associate professor at RMIT University, Australia, and an expert in China's aviation industry. Professor Jung, welcome. What is your reaction to the media report that this crash was deliberate? I mean, could this be true? Um, thank you very much uh, for having me today. It's my pleasure to be here. Uh, my first reaction is that uh, it's uh, very uh, surprisingly pleasant in terms of uh, how speedy it is uh, to uh, restore and analyze the, the data from the damaged uh, black boxes because, as we know from the previous reports and also from the information available, that the two black boxes actually were uh, severely damaged and then they were uh, transported to America for data restoration and data analysis. So that really means it's less than two months' time the data was able to be restored and to be analyzed, and some information apparently was available uh, for further investigation and further analysis. So I think from that perspective, it's really very, very effective in investigation process. But uh, to what extent that information is, um, you know, I'm not uh, questioning the authentication of the data, but uh, I think it still uh, needs further the investigation that really demonstrates there might be various um, uh, uh, scenarios that the right. investigators are very, very interested and willing to explore. So it might be one of the scenarios that they need to investigate. Right. Now, let's assume for a moment that the final investigation, and we're still awaiting this final investigation, and that this investigation concludes that this was indeed a deliberate act. Do you think we can expect China to make this report public? Um, so that is a kind of a proposition uh, in the event that it is a deliberate effect. I am... Um, 
I'm confident that uh, the uh, investigator and also the authority CAC as a regulator and also safety investigation authorization will be uh, very um, honest and, and uh, honor the fact. Um, but if there are other contributing factors and also as we know that when something contributes to the uh, air crash, uh, perhaps it is not just one single uh, fact that a uh, factor that will contribute to the uh, air crash. Perhaps right. there are more than one contributing factors. So that we, we need to take a holistic and systemic approach to that. Now, China has had a relatively good safety record, air safety record in the past decade, particularly. I mean, can you talk to us a bit about the standards uh, of air safety employed in China to make sure that aircraft are safe to fly? Uh, yes, absolutely. I think as we know that in the past 14 years, perhaps China has maintained a very high safety record in terms of there is no uh, fatal crash. And the latest one, in uh, besides this one, was uh, 1994, and that was the uh, aircraft crashed in a very northeastern city in China. Um, but um, ever since then, there apparently there has been no fatal crash. But having said that, uh, apparently there are um, some issues in terms of the safety hazard, etc., etc., and this is something that is not uh, uh, not not avoidable in aviation uh, operation because we know that the air transport industry is a high risk industry and the safety is the priority of the industry uh, at the global uh, scale. Um, so China apparently is very committed to uh, enhancing its uh, safety management system um, and implemented various type of uh, procedures and uh, measurements in terms of improving its safety record. Um, but Having said that, we do understand that in the past ten decade, in the past uh, ten years, in the past decade, that the air transport has been um, uh, growing very, very rapidly, uh, exponentially in China's domestic market. And the Chinese authority, they recognize that there are variations in terms of the development and the growth of the air transport industry. For example, the eastern um, airports along the eastern coast, um, so that is rapidly developing but um, you know the uh, central and the western part is also experiencing rapid uh, growth um, but then the traffic is really shifting from the east to the west but in terms of the infrastructure etc etc uh, western and the central parts of China is not as advanced or as to the extent as those in the in the eastern part so that actually um, you know uh, uh, gives a significant kind of a pressure in terms of the safety management. So uh, from right. the industry's perspective, apparently, you know, this kind of attention has been existing for quite some time. Either you are satisfying the air travel demand, uh, you know, from the public, or you maintain the very high uh, safety record. Um, so um, the right. industry apparently has been very committed to um, maintaining the very high safety record, but apparently something has happened very recently. We'll have to leave it there uh, for the time being, but thank you so much for that insight into China's aviation industry. Crystal Zhang from the RMIT University in Australia. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Thank you.